About 15 years ago, the first modern artificial intelligence, AI tools, were released into the marketing space. All of a sudden, they could predict what we liked, what we might buy this week, and even how much we'd be willing to pay. It fundamentally changed the retail industry, and the brightest minds saw the success and said, imagine what this can do in healthcare. Here we are, well over a decade later, and not a single AI tool exists in the daily practice of most physicians in this country. Why is that? Why has AI failed so miserably in healthcare, despite billions of dollars invested, thousands of tools created, and so much success in other industries? Yes, we're all a little leery of having a computer be part of our healthcare decisions, and people are rightfully wary of AI in healthcare. It is, as they say, a high-stakes environment. But that term deserves some context. So let me recount for you the time the most pleasant gentleman was dragged into the ER by his wife to come see me for chest pain he'd been having for days. On the EKG machine, there's a mini AI tool that reads the EKG for you, and on his it said, heart attack. <laughs> Wasn't particularly helpful for me. I, too, can read the EKG. I saw the same thing. But I look up, and there he is, smiling, two thumbs up. <laughs> That's not what a critical heart attack patient looks like. I can see that, but the computer can't. And if I called the heart doctor every time the machine was concerned, he'll stop picking up the phone. There's way too many false positives. Now, had that tool weighted all the different factors to only the probability of false positive or calculated the risk of all the decisions and how we make the best one, it'd be loads more helpful. But it doesn't do that. And so I spent another 20 minutes, got another test, which confirmed that it was a very real heart attack. And so, wasting no more time, we got him to the heart doctor so fast, his wife didn't even have time to give him a kiss good luck. But letting nothing slow us down, I comforted her, I let her know she had plenty of time to give him that kiss in less than an hour when he was coming out the other side of that treatment. And so off he went. And no more than five minutes after getting on that treatment table, he died. <laughs> While his wife sat alone in the room where I left her, waiting to call their kids and let them know he was okay, expecting him to come through those doors any minute to get the kiss that I promised her. <laughs> this, this is what high stakes means. <laughs> this is what drives some people to build tools to help me make the diagnosis quicker. They're not have wasted those critical 20 minutes, but these same high stakes are what make others scared to have a computer participate in the decision at all. But what if both those ideas are wrong? What if there's a different way to use AI? One where the story ends with him alive. His kids get to still have a dad. I mean, why after sitting on a heart attack for days did he only die as soon as he got the treatment? Isn't it possible that after all that time, the last thing his poor heart could handle was such aggressive treatment. Had we chosen a lesser treatment, would he still be alive? Shouldn't we be building tools to answer that question? Instead of ones that read the EKG for me, when I can already do that myself? Consider this. An emergency physician, notoriously the one with the least time and information to make the right diagnosis, has a whopping 99.5% accuracy. That's huge. No one of these AI tools can't reliably beat the doctors. I was so blinded by tragedy that all we can think to do is try to make that better, instead of maybe realizing that the bigger problems left to solve aren't so obvious, might have something to do with how much harmful treatment we're rushing to give. Doctors know that the tests and treatments hurt people. We just convince ourselves that's caused by other doctors. It happens to other patients. Never the one in front of me, never you. We are loath to believe our help is anything but. This is how my colleagues tried to stab my father in his liver as a favor to me. It's true, I was a medical director in my hometown. I found this ugly mass on his liver. It probably wasn't cancer, it was probably just a collection of blood vessels. But who wants to miss cancer on the medical director's dad? So, two CAT scans, MRI, ultrasound. Finally, this plan to take a big, sharp needle, shove it in his belly, pull out a chunk, take a closer look. Pain, infection risk, huge bleeding risk, all in the name of helping. And by that time, we're almost certain it was just a harmless collection of blood vessels. Harmless, so long as you don't go poking it with sharp objects. But we still had to talk them out of the needle stabbing plan. 
without an AI tool to show the risk versus benefit of any decision, it is far too easy to overlook the harm and focus only on the good. And the more important it is to please someone, the more we blind ourselves to that harm. My father's sin was being the medical director's dad. I've worked in a place full of proper celebrities, film actors, and politicians. You should see what's done to those poor people. But don't for a minute think this means that the safe bets to avoid us altogether. Oh no, during COVID, when people were too scared to come to us for help, they were dying, becoming permanently disabled from things that would have been so easy for us to have treated had they just come to us in time. Avoiding us comes at great peril. To be well, you must subject yourselves to our care. We're stuck together. You might want to start asking, we don't do too much to help you though. It's a fact. Some of our tests are the cause of cancer. But it can take 30 years to show up, long after I'm retired. And it takes weeks, months, longer. The damage is far too removed from the decision to reliably make the connection, or better, predict it before the decision's even made. I mean, it's practically impossible for any person to do all the complicated math to make such a prediction. It'd be like trying to look at all the wind directions and temperatures around the Earth to predict that a thunderstorm's going to happen here next week, or look at all the web pages you browsed and purchases you made in less months to predict what you might buy this weekend. Exactly what AI has been doing roaringly well. No doctor can predict the harm from any one decision, but AI can if you have the right people building it to solve the right problems. And what's really cool about the AI is that even though it still makes mistakes, the mistakes it makes are glaringly obvious to the experienced human. And the mistakes a human makes are incredibly obvious to the AI. So when built properly, with the strengths from the other's weaknesses, the two watching each other's backs, the sum is so much greater than its equal parts. So why don't these tools exist? And what does that have to do with you? It has so much to do with you. You are the most critical part of the solution. It, it, in business school, they teach us a rather obvious lesson where you can have the greatest product on earth, but it's a waste of time and money to build it if nobody's going to buy it. And you are the reason why most doctors aren't interested in a tool like this. We're in an era of healthcare where your opinion of us affects our ability to practice through satisfaction surveys, complaint letters, referrals, administrator perception review, your opinion drives how we get paid, if we can even keep a job. And in over 15 years as a medical director, I have never once gotten a complaint about a physician who delivered too much compassionate care through tests and treatments, ever. In fact, most complaints were when it was appropriately withheld. There was a line of people ready to sue me and trash me online if I miss a small cancer, but nobody if I cause it. So the message from you, our most influential stakeholders, has been crystal clear. More tests, more treatments mixed with more of a good doctor. If there's any doubt whatsoever, do more. Until you change the narrative, you'll have a very hard time finding a doctor who would ever want a tool that would help them give you less. Especially, or even, it was better for your health in the long term. So unless you demand we pay attention to this, we just won't, because it is deeply ingrained in the medical culture to brush aside concerns about the harm we cause. You can pick any point in history for proof. Go all to the 1850s. Very smart doctor figured out that if we don't wash our hands between putting the dead bodies and the live patients, live patients turn to dead bodies. <laughs> well, he didn't know what germs were. He just knew we were hurting people, wanted to help us stop. The medical community took this as they do such things. <gasps> you don't say and they threw him in an insane asylum where he died of an unwashed wound. <laughs> it wasn't until decades later when another doctor proved that germs exist that anything changed at all. There are so many other examples. This time will be no different until we use AI for something that's actually helpful, like showing the harm from any decision, proving that the germs on our hands exist. We can't get to the next stage in the evolution of your healthcare. And it's just not going to happen until the doctors sincerely believe that doing so will improve your opinion of us. So you need to start asking the right questions, like, what's the probability this test, this treatment, will hurt me more than help? Expect us not to have an accurate answer. We don't really know yet. But you can expect us to be dismissive of the harm. So expect nothing to change. 
unless you keep asking these questions. What are the chances this will hurt me more than help? Should we even do it? It's going to take us years to build these tools and get them out to everyone. And every time you don't ask, is that much longer? We all have to wait for anything to change at all. So please, keep asking these questions. What is the probability this test, this treatment, will hurt me more than help? Should we even do it? You can create the world where we finally leverage the awesome power of AI to actually improve your health. Please.